So, um, we're gonna, just going to go through the, the four phases, which um, one of them we probably don't talk about a lot because as young younger coaches, we probably do work with the foundation phase quite often. Um, potentially then if you work with the team long enough, you, you then develop into the youth development phase, um, professional development phase, which is phase which is 17 and above so under 18 teams potentially and then seniors as well so I know Jack um, and Jake especially are currently involved with with senior teams so hopefully it might give you a little bit of an insight into into the type of um, language you use for the phases because there will be some some ones that stay there will be some ones that are only relevant to certain certain age groups as well so first question I wanted you to to, to, to ask people and I'm happy for people to jump in here but what are your constants so what I mean by that is in the with the age groups you've worked with what are things which you would carry through each age group so maybe if you've started working with an underage team five six years ago and they're now under 13s what is something which you've always kept with you in your back pocket to say right these players will know from experiences of working with me as a coach that me and me only has said that. So 10 years time when you ask a player, right, what did Jack Gray say? What was something that Jack Gray always said to you to remind you about doing something in the game? So what are your constants? So I'm happy to appeal for people to jump in here um, um, and obviously give their opinions. Mine wouldn't be able to say it, uh, tell you anything because it even doesn't to us. <laughs> well, Jack, do, you want to go, do you want to go first what, what's something that which you find that before a session doesn't matter who you're working with what would you find that is going gonna, is gonna to get them is going to really really engage them um, I think a big thing for me is trying to in terms of the use of language in, in conversation is no matter which group of players I'm working with it's Personally, I'm, I'm trying to build the connection with them straight away. So it might be like as a person, as opposed to just a player. So whether it's a session with the RTC, whether it's a session with an under 13s PDC group or the adults at Cramlet and like just trying to find out how they are, um, how they're feeling, what their day has been like, and just sort of try to get a, get a quick idea of them there. So in terms of language, like how's your day been? What you've done at school today? Has anything happened? Anything exciting happened? Just little things like that to... To build that relationship obviously with the adults it might be are you hung over um, just trying to find out a little bit about where they're at and as, as a person that day yeah i think it's something we spoke about just before we let everybody in actually about the terminology that adults are probably used to especially ones that play at a sunday league that you know they're not very receptive to to new words if that makes sense or they've always been used to that sort of you know dig in and get stuck in and let them know they're there in, in the first five minutes and that sort of stuff. There's, there's not nothing really in, inventive about the, the language that's, that's being used through that. But my my question is really buzzwords. So um, with obviously youth development phase kids, if, if you were to say press, they would understand. They would understand set a trap. So a lot of people use those sort of, that sort of terminology to, to really sort of get them when they're on the pitch. So again, has anybody got any, any more experiences of that? I think coming from obviously mostly doing foundation phase stuff and like trying to drop questioning um, and then obviously moving on to the adults and doing that alongside it this year. Um, I've, I've used the what comes next during games a lot. So someone's done something good rather than telling them it's, it's what comes next, but that's obviously not telling them comes from the background in foundation phase stuff. But I'm starting to try and drip that into the adult stuff as well. Rather than, like you said, the Sunday League stuff of squeeze, press, uh, all of the, the generic stuff. Yeah, I think it's a good point that because when I was when I was coaching um coaching my bowling team a few years ago, one thing I we played against, I can't remember who it was to be fair, but one thing that their coach would always say, where's the next pass? And when I look back now, I would think mm, maybe that's not the best advice because of the fact that we, we're slightly restricting the players to go to go and write, well, 
when you get the ball, you have to pass the you have to pass it to the next player. You have to pass to somebody else on your team. Whereas you're restricting them to their decisions and saying we're not really allowing you to dribble. So, in my experience, that's something that that I found. But it's a good point you make, Jake, saying that what comes next because it might be that it's a pass, it might be a, a, a dribble, it might be a press, it might be that we can't win the ball back immediately, so we have to drop. Um, so I like that. To be fair, is there anybody else? No. So I think my, my point with that is really with what are your constants is that one thing I've learned over the past couple of years is try and try and have those in your back pocket. Try and have those 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 buzzwords to say that no matter how old they are, no matter how much experience they've got in the game, to have that in your back pocket to say, right, when we go into the next season, when we go into the next year. Do we know what this means? Do we know what the, this buzzword means? And when I go back into the presentation, it, it probably makes a little bit more sense in terms of to some age groups, to some players, some words won't make sense for a while. So if you're a seven-year-old, some play, some words won't make sense immediately. It might have to be explained in a different way. It might have to be a little bit more kid-friendly sometimes. It might have to be a little bit more relevant to what they do in school sometimes as well. So... Um, it, it's again something that I think is probably useful to have when you when you're actually coaching to have some have those words in your back pocket to say, right, I'm going to use them, but it has to be contextual, it has to be it has to make sense as well. So just to dip it back into the presentation. Um, do, 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 do. So what I've done is I've just put a few words on the um, on the screen there. Some, again, will make sense to only some age groups. So what I'd like you to do is, if you've got a bit of pen and paper there, is just write three or four words down. And if you can put in the chat now how that would resonate with different age groups. So, for example, if I was to say <sighs> covering support to a seven-year-old, would that make sense immediately? Possibly, possibly not. It depends how long you've worked with them for. It depends what their level of understanding is. So just pick out three or four words now. And what I'd like you to do is put a relevant word or phrase for a foundation phase kid, a youth development phase kid, and a senior player. And I'll pick some out and I'll, I'm going to check and challenge and maybe get some more involved. There might, there might be some there that are only relevant to certain um, certain age levels. So I look at channels, for example. Like channels is a, is a big one for adults. When they don't have anything, I'll put it in the channel for the for the big lad in front of chase or for the quick lad in front of chase. So um, there might only be ones there that are relevant to, to certain age groups. If anybody's got any more to add, by the way, I'm happy to I'm happy for you to do that. These are just ones I've picked out. Okay, so I'm just going to go to Jake straight away. Um, foundation phase, enjoy the ball tricks and skills. So straight away, that that resonates really well with, with foundation phase kids. So tricks and skills, I would say, is probably one of the biggest phrases and words you can use with kids that age. So if you said it with a seven-year-old kid coming into the session for the first time, show me some tricks and skills. But Jake, I'm going to challenge you now. How would you translate that to an 18-year-old player? For me, that would be you're going on creativity and you're going and you're delving into why they're doing it and which areas of the pitch and and what the benefits are of doing that in that area. Yeah. 
So Jack, when you're talking about variation of crosses, what could how could you translate that to a foundation phase player? Um, I was just sort of thinking around what it looks like in a game. So if I'm looking at the foundation phase, we're probably playing five or seven aside. And in terms of a variation of crosses, well, you're probably always crossing from a a similar distance from, from the box yeah. because of the, the width of the pitch and what the what the game looks like in the foundation phase when it's a little bit more compact and you probably don't cross the ball as such, but you might be passing it into the box or cutting it back to an extent. Um, so yeah, I was just thinking around like I, I, rem- I remember Dipper saying a brilliant one in the foundation phase, um, saying like how many different ways can you get to Spain? So the box was Spain, um, and that's always sort of stuck with me in terms of looking across some of the younger players like. Sometimes you don't even need to use football language and they'll, and they'll understand it straight away. Yes, but on. So, Wayne, you just put one in there about combinations. So, do you think combinations is one of those that you could probably use throughout all the phases? No, I think you would, ch- you would change it. So, with the younger groups, it might be something like you little give and goes or you, you want twos, pass a move. But then, as they're getting older, you're obviously talking about you might be going into things like third man running. Um, so I think that one will change as you go through. Yeah, I mean, I've put one in there as well about can you help him or her um, on the ball? So that went, that might translate to um, support play. Um, again, like you're saying about third, ma- third man runs, that would probably translate more towards the, the under-18s and the, the adults, depending on what level of playing. Obviously, Northern League, uh, Northern Lions League might understand it a little bit more. Um, Sunday League players... I'd be surprised if they even train, to be honest. So that's something they probably have to do in the game. So, yeah, spot on. Um, so, just share my screen again. Apologies, I'm coming in and out, but I'm just trying to get as many as many people involved as possible. So, just done a little scenario for you there. Just, again, happy. you don't have to write it down. You can just jump in and out. Um, Try and get as many people involved as possible. So you've just completed your level two coaching badge and have started a new grassroots men's team. Um, do you resort to the same messages from the coach education course or do you use more adult friendly language to engage the players? So I don't know how many how many of us have sort of been on coaching courses lately, but the language that is used is generally different to what we hear on a Sunday morning, for example, or sometimes even a Saturday afternoon. So anybody ha- happy for anybody to jump in here? Do you think that some of the messages you get from the course would, would actually resonate with the players or would you have to just go back to almost square one with, with them and just use language they're, they're used to? I think for me, that's a... Uh... It's a challenging one that if you if you work if you only work with a group once a week or you're not even doing any training you're just playing games on a weekend I think then it, that would be quite challenging to completely change the language You're used to a certain type of language and communication um, but I think with any group you've got if you've got them over a, a long period of time you could always drip feed and introduce new terminology or the terminology that you want to use that eventually that they would be able to understand and and take forward. I just think it's it's one of them, it's horses for courses, what whatever age group you're working with, but also the type of group. Some react to to certain type of communication, but even the individuals will react to different things. Um, so I think that's a it's a difficult one. I think it would depend on your group, it would depend on the age and it would probably depend on um, how often you've got them and what level you're playing? Yeah, I think Wayne and I don't know if I can get Havers in here a little bit. I don't know if he's if he's at his iPad or anything here, but um, I think we it's something we found this year with the the scholars, sixteen and seventeen year olds, and I think we take it for granted a little bit that they understand not only physically what to do, but sort of vocally what they understand. Um, I mean, Havers, I don't know. I don't know if you want to jump in and just just go through a little bit of that in terms of what we what we sort of try and get the message across of the basics. Cheers, Scott. 
Um, so, well, I just made us think of a story um, from <laughs> pre-season last year, and we went on a trip down to Sudbury, uh, and we played we played a, a couple of games, and um, we had a centre half. He was like six foot four, um, centre half, played centre half all of his life, um, and it was the third game, and uh, I think Stewie was was asking him to, to tuck in. He's going tuck in, tuck in. Uh, and at the end of the first third, he sort of came over and he was like, he was a little bit kind of shaking. And he said, look, I don't know what that means. I don't know what tuck in means. Um, and we were like, all right. Um, and that we we sort of took a step back and thought, right, well, we're taking for granted that he should know that. Thinking he's 16 year old, he probably should know playing centre half what tuck in means. Um, I mean, he's not no longer on the programme, so maybe that was a... That was our fault, um, but well, that was like a, a, one of the eye openers that you know, one of the ones that you come across where you maybe you do take for granted some things, um, especially around the language and and you assume, I suppose you're assuming that there's some knowledge, um, but again, one of the things you you when you go on the football courses is uh, thinking about like someone's football age compared with their actual age. So that their sort of development within football might be different, uh, depending on how long they've been going. Um, so that's why language can be important. So it comes probably back to knowing your players. Um, if they've been in an environment with lots of coaching before, if they've just been, you know, they turn up for training and play five side and then go home, like it's their background. So if you know that, then you might that might help you build up how you speak to your players. Yeah, spot on. Spot on. I think that's a really good point you make. Actually, it's it's something I want to try and um try and get everyone involved, well, as many people involved in as possible, because I don't know if anybody's had any experiences of working with players that are maybe of that youth development phase age, so maybe 14-year-old, but their football understanding is 10, 11-year-old. Um, and the terminology you're using is maybe completely above their head. Um in the, the don't don't understand it. Are you nodding your head there, Louis? Do you want to do you want to jump in? Um, yeah, just I'm thinking more. Um, we've had a lad who's come from running um, in our under 16s now, uh, going under 17s, um, and all the terminology from him is absolutely lost. Uh, if you he doesn't know, he hardly knows what the offside is. Never mind um, like press or stuff like that so we sort of have to uh with him take it like back a step and maybe put it into context what he'll know um so for example we used the um well i didn't use it it was actually a parent who came up with the idea of the overlap run and used it as a relay race okay. so for example if he is the person with a bat on um he would then go to the the uh, the winger to pass the baton on, shall we say, but then at the end, you have to decelerate sort of thing. So imagine that decelerate as you're carrying on. And since then, he's just bit like, we put it into his context and since then, like, hasn't stopped doing it and it's worked to full effect. But something similar as well, when you're saying, can you, can you drop in his terms, like, as a coach, I'm expecting him to drop the defensive line a little bit deeper, but in his eyes, that means, can I go closer to the player who's in the middle of the pitch? And then, sort of other players get on his back because he doesn't know that if that makes sense so it's sort of putting it into context as well but at the same time trying to get other players to understand so as coaches as uh have said there we sort of build a career on surmising I, th I think especially like as they get older but also we need I think players surmise as well so they'll shout it and it's sort of trying to get them to educate them as well yeah, I agree with you. Like, it's funny. I've got a funny story. Actually, Stevie Mack told us this one. Um, I think he was working with one of the girls a few years ago. I don't know what age group or what level it was at, but he told that to, he told that to sit deeper, um, and she just sat down in the middle of the pitch. And I was like, I was laughing. I was laughing my head off. I thought, like, are you joking? Like, are you, are you winding us up? She, he was like, no, no. Like, she actually sat down in the middle of the pitch. And I was like, you're laughing, but you're thinking. Well, yeah, but does she actually know what that means, though? So again, it's 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 using those assumptions and just saying, well, they must know because we know. So 
I think those conversations you're having away from the pitch a little bit, what like Jack said about and have I said about knowing your players is absolutely vital. I know it's a bit of a cliche and we say it quite often, but it is so important that I think a lot of what we do is away from the pitch. 80% of the the connection and the, the conversations we have are probably away from the pitch. So then we can translate that to what we do on the pitch. So if maybe not for adults and older kids, but younger kids, can we can we actually use those conversations to our advantage to then take them into the pitch? So maybe something that they've been working on in school. So I don't know, for example, if they've been um, learning about different sports, like you're saying, Louis, about he's a, he's a runner. If they've been learning about different sports, because it's fresh in the memory, can we use that language to actually help them? Can we ha- use that language to actually assist them on the pitch? So I think when it comes to the them growing up and them becoming a little bit more responsible for themselves, they might then use that for their experiences with working with their own players as well. I don't know if anybody's got any more experiences of that where, where they've just literally took took language for granted and they've just sort of they've had players come off the pitch and go I didn't know anything I don't know what you were talking about I didn't understand what you were talking about there I think uh, Louis will probably agree with me here but it's in terms of futsal went into futsal last year year before whatever it was and although it's it is obviously similar to football the language is massively different so going into that environment being completely football oriented there probably wasn't an appreciation from coaches that if you haven't grown up with futsal, you're not going to know what these things mean. Yeah, yeah it's a good point. I mean, futsal for me, I love playing the game, but there's no doubt there's this terminology in, within futsal, that, which I, I completely passed me by as well. So again, it's uh, I'm nearly 30 year old and I don't understand some of the stuff that goes on and it goes back to different sports as well. So when I'm watching a game of football and I'm watching it with me, my lass, and she's asking me questions, it winds us up because I just think, how don't you know? How don't you know about this sort of stuff? Like, she's saying, oh, well, who's who's on this who's on this team and who's on that team and stuff? And I'm thinking, well, just look at, just watch just watch the game. But I'm, again, I'm, it's it's me being presumptuous and saying she should know, but actually she hasn't got a clue about football. So I've got to, I've got to explain things to her in a, in a much simpler way. And it, it goes back to players as well, because... If I put myself in a twelve-year-old's shoes, like there's n- there's no way that I'm going to know anywhere near as much as an adult coach does, because I haven't had those experiences. So again, it's it's about understanding what level they're at. Um, again, what, what have I said about what is their actual age, but what is their football age? What is their level of understanding about the game? Um, and I think it's really important that we get get that in early. So there's so if we do get that in early enough, we can we can assist them in the game. Uh, Marshall, I'm going to pick on you here if that's all right. I was just, it just got us thinking, obviously, in terms of like the use of language as a coach. Like, if you're fortunate enough to have someone like Marshall within your environment where like there's a performance analyst there, like, is Marshall potentially doing some stuff with players and using some, like, making some really good points around the analysis side and like showing them clips and using some really good football specific language? But then the coach could be like using a completely different term for the to help the player understand, and like both both are right. So then, like, is it a case of almost like Marshall? Have you had any like experiences where you and a coach have potentially explained things differently, or like, is it a case of does the environment that you're in need to have almost like a common language where everybody's sort of singing off the same hymn sheet? Because we probably like I've just started thinking there. Well, actually, the the, the language that I use. And the language that Joey uses at Crammy, like we could be saying the same thing to, to the same players, but in a different way. And then we're probably confusing the players. Um, I don't know, Marshall, like have, have you had any experience of that as an analyst? Because it's probably a slightly different role or absolutely picking on you there. What mute does he? Oh, his mic's not working. I think it's a good point, Jack, actually, because I, I was going to mention about core coaching as well. Um, I think this is where core coaching is absolutely vital because I was having a conversation with somebody um, 
about this, saying, you know, as a manager or a head coach, you have to make sure that you get your messages across early. Um, again, I go back to it, getting it across early, but it is really, really important because I think the longer you wait to get your messages across and those absolute non-negotiables almost um, about what, what you want from the players, if you're walking on the pitch to give a message to somebody and, you know, your assistant's um, giving somebody a little bit of treatment or maybe talking to individual players and then he comes in and starts talking to the same players and saying completely different things, I think that's where that's where things get go wrong. Um so those conversations before half time or during the game about what language are you going to use, what are you going to say to the players that's going to go right well. It doesn't matter who's saying it, we all understand what the message is. Um Jake, I don't know if you you've had any, any experiences at Washi with that. I think the biggest one at Washi uh, we've had um, it was one of the one of the coaches because there's three of us, so we do the odd session each. Um, one of the lads loved like going on about the word squeeze, and it was never explained or anything. So I brought it up after the session, just saying like. It seemed to work and stuff, but do they know what it means? And the answer was like, he didn't know that they knew what it meant. But we always get there 10 minutes early and like go through what's going to happen at the session and that. Um, so that was one of the questions before the next session of what does the word squeeze mean to you? Um, and once it started, once people started getting into it, most, most people thought like they had the same idea of it. But there was one or two which weren't 100% sure. So it's then sort of that's then become that universal language for that for that team. So everyone now knows exactly what's expected from it. I think like, the, the point is there, that there's no right and wrong way to do it. Like It's just the way that's going to suit your players. So there's a quote um, I heard last week from Hubert Busby Jr., who's the Jamaican women's national team coach. Um, basically says no, there's no need for a, a good cop, bad cop, just the right cop at the right time. And I thought it was a really good, a really good way to, to sort of put it across and say, you do, you, I don't need to be the good guy and someone else doesn't need to be the bad guy. It's just putting that language and context across in the right way and um, at the right time. So I thought it was a really good phrase. Um, Pat, I'm going to come to you if that's okay, and I'm going to and then I'm going to bring up Louis, um, Louis' question. So. But I'm just going to ask you from a, an academy point of view, obviously a lot of the time on a Sunday in training sessions, we work as a two. So how, what experiences have you got of that? Is it because the, the sort of the curriculum is already there to, to, to help you with, with the words? Is it, does it benefit you in, in some way, shape or form? And then does that translate onto the pitch as well? Yeah, I think we've definitely got an advantage um, because we basically have, well, you know yourself, we've got, um, a bit like a phrase sheet anyway at the club to try and keep it um, linked the same. So no matter what's or no matter who's delivering, um, the same terminology is coming out all the time. Um, that's something I've tried to do a little bit in our grassroots club as well. I like the idea of that. But ultimately, you still win this two of you, especially when you're working together to begin with. You do use a lot of different phrases. Still, you know, you can it, you can it as much as you can put a a list together of terminology and phrases, you're not going to cover everything in that. So I think we cover the key things, but when you're getting into minute details, that's when you get a lot of different phrases come out. Um, and there's loads that I've picked up from people as well. So you pick up and think, oh, it's a really good way of putting that. So it's important to have that that balance, I think. I think the point is as well, as long as it helps the players, it doesn't really matter, does it? I mean, as long as if it's you or if it's me or somebody else saying it, as long as it's helping the players, it's obviously gonna, it's only gonna, it's only gonna be be a good thing. Yeah, I think it's really important to check their understanding as well. So just like a little one, I always use the the, the phrase hard lines. So I never say unlucky or anything, just not not intentionally or anything. But uh, in about three months with my group this year at the academy, one of them turned around and was like, "What does that mean?" They didn't have a clue. They literally didn't have a clue. And then because one says at three or four, like, yeah, we don't know what it means either. So you have to, something as basic as that and something that just comes out during a game, that's not even information, you have to sit and explain to them. 
So it's, you know, I think all the time we're using terminology all the time that maybe these kids don't understand, but we just don't realise unless one of them speaks up. Yes, but on. I think that the core coaching, I'll admit I'm rubbish at core coaching. I'm absolutely terrible. Like, it's not that I don't listen. It's just that sometimes I don't know when the right time is to say something or when the right time is to just leave it and just let, let them play. Um, but obviously, Pat, you've been in that environment a little bit more a little bit more than me, so you, your experiences are probably a lot more um, constant than mine, if you like. So, I Louis, say, it's, go on. It is, oh, it, is, it is difficult. It's definitely difficult. I find that um, with co-coaching, it's it's hard to take a back seat at times. Um, yeah. So, but it is great to pick on other people's terminology as well. Uh, Louis, I'm just going to come to your question there. So, do we as coaches become a bit too overprotective with using only football phrases during our during our coaches? Uh, so, I don't know if you want to expand on your question a little bit. Yeah. So. Um... I've like sort of met many a coach who um, have come across players who are um, struggling with certain terminology, but like don't want to reframe from football in any way, for example. And I'm thinking it, it, it's more like foundation phase, youth development phase. So, for example, the one what I learned of someone was um, about like when they say like the, the like the Sweden defender. Um, using like bulldog but I said this to another coach and they were like but that's got nothing to do with football and stuff like that so I feel like sometimes we sort of throw in all these football terminology but really we need you like as coaches need to think right um so for example we've got Jack will know about um Dan Woods at the the um PDC and he is rugby mad like absolutely rugby mad and that's half the reason why when he gets the ball he just absolutely legs it and he's got the it's pierce to do it but some of the stuff we have spoke to him about has been based around rugby like how we can use that terminology and like his mind was blown when we started to use it and I just feel like as coaches are we sometimes like too precious over that do we do we sort of think it has to be football or do we do do others have any examples of where they've like went beyond the realms of football anybody Anybody want to jump in on that one? No, I think it's it's a good point. I mean, what I've what I try to do when I was I mean when I went to Berkeley my first session, obviously I I spent the majority of my years working with kids up to probably 12, 13 year old, and I went to Berkeley with blokes, some type, some over 30, and I was like completely blown away by the difference because they were a decent level. Um, it was like I said, it wasn't Sunday League players. They were a decent level, but I was blown away by one the difference in tempo for one. But again, it was it was just very Sunday Leaguey that the the stuff they were saying. Um, there was nothing different. What I thought, mm, like you you sound like Northern League players. There was nothing to to suggest that that was the case. They all sounded like generic adult um just shouting stuff for the sake of shouting stuff and again when, when I would go through individual conversations with some of them it would be really really simple and I just think when you're saying about are we precious about it I, I think sometimes again we overcomplicate those conversations as well and we assume because they are adults oh well they must understand everything about the game but they trust me like and Jack will probably be back me up here and Jake and others as well they definitely don't they definitely don't understand everything about the game some of them don't understand the bare minimum uh, go back to the basics as well some of them don't get it um i've went on a bit of a tangent there sorry lou but um i've just talked about my experiences but in terms of what you're talking about there is that where maybe if you work in a pa environment it's quite useful because you tr you may be translating what you're doing with bulldog there or invasion games or, in or invasion games quite useful where you're taking it away from the parameters of football you're still trying to keep it quite relevant because it's invasion and obviously it, it translates to football and you can try and drip feed those words into the game and say, right, well, because if we play this game here, handball, how could that translate to football? So use of space, for example, um, passing and moving, so those sorts of things. I don't know if you've had any experiences that, Louis. Um, the one thing I can speak of was we played... Um, 
my team played, I think it was Hebben, just before uh, the last lockdown, um, uh, or the current lockdown, should I say. And one of the interesting thing was their coach shouting box out from corners, um, which I didn't get what it was for. So I, I approached him after the game and I was like, do you mind us asking what you mean by box out? And he took the terminology from basketball. So when you have a shot, they like get the body in the way of um, between the player and the basketball to stop the rebound. And I thought that was quite good because all his players knew what that meant. And it was quite um, like our players didn't. It caught them off guard, but their players seemed very regimented with it and knew what it meant. So I was just sort of interested if anyone else had any other experience. Um, great just reading there what Ryan's put there about that's a great point to be fair and I think ultimately it's it's what we're trying to summarise in, in the conversation I think you literally you, you don't know you don't know what you know how the players are going to react until you try something so one of the scenarios I was going to put in before which I haven't um, is you've been working with foundation phase players for 10 years and all of a sudden you go into an under 18s environment and then, you know, how do you translate what you've already done into an under 18s environment? Are they going to take that as, is he taking the mic? Like, is he seriously saying that to me? Or are they going to jump on, on board? Um, but again, it's it's very much, you know, I'm I'm, try, I'm saying all, all these things. And when you go into your environment, when you come back from lockdown, they might not work, but they might. Other players might have came from different environments where they've had terminology that is quite new the new methodology of coaching almost whereas some might have been working with coaches that are very old school and are very used to just using the, the generic terms like like i said before channels and squeeze and all those sorts of things but again i, I don't think there's anything right or wrong about that i think as long as it's helping the players it's, it's okay um i mean it's not something i've tried to phase it out of my my sort of coaching to think about when i played sunday league some of the things I'd hear were just ridiculous. And I've tried to phase it out of my coach and to, to try and suit the players because of the way they've been brought up through through coaching methods now. Um, but I don't necessarily think there's a, there's a right and wrong way of doing it. But it's a great point, Ryan, to be fair. So cheers for that. Just gonna um just gonna jump back into the presentation just for the last few few minutes, um, just to go through a couple the last things. So just going back to what I heard last week, um, Hubert Busby Jr. put in a webinar, it was at the US uh, United sort of coaches convention, it was really, really good actually. Um, just two things he said, so collective communi communication gets you in, individual communication keeps you in. I think that's a really, really good one um, for, for anybody that's maybe, and I don't want to, you know, change the conversation and the connection because I think that's a, it's a different conversation altogether but collective communication and individual communication are two separate things um, collective communication has to, to relate to all players, it has to be something that is transferred to, for everybody to understand but individual communication, end of the day everybody's different so everybody takes the game in different ways, everybody learns in different ways so if you can have those conversations early and really um, get to the point where you understand that player as much as you possibly can off the pitch, it's going to help you understand the player on the pitch as well. Um, I hate is putting this in from Stevie Bruce, but I found it quite interesting, actually. Um, and I just wondered if I could get people's thoughts on this. So he mentioned this, I think, just before the Arsenal game on Sunday. So he says, turn up, have a bit of pride in your performance, pass the ball to each other, take part in the game. Forget about tactics or analysts. You need that too, but you have to do the basics as well. I just think, if I'm a professional footballer and I've been playing the game for years and years and years and I see my manager saying something like that, what am I thinking? Am I thinking that's 18 months down the drain or is it actually, is some of it actually relevant to, to what we need to go back to, which is the basics? So when he says about there about forget about tactics, I'm thinking mm, like that would worry me as a professional footballer, but is that more a case of that is definitely more relevant to foundation phase kid? 
don't know if anybody wants to jump in on that one. I suppose it comes back to um, something I saw on Twitter recently, which was, I think it was uh, Jack Grealish talking about Steve Bruce. And he said that um, he was like shocked and appalled by his uh, coaching approach because he used to stand in the middle of them and throw the ball up in the air and shout play. Um, And for a player like Jack Grealish, obviously that is not what he needs. But as you see, for some people, that might be what they need. I mean, I wish someone would probably go into the the Academy of Light with the first team and do that because some of them do need that. Do you know what I mean? Just game time, just like to learn through the game. But obviously the likes of Jack Grealish, who was like put her off the cuff. I mean, you saw by that touch with um, uh, against whoever it was. Like he just does stuff in the spur of the moment. And is that what he, he, he needs? Probably not. But as you see, that can mean... Uh, as Ryan said in the chat, it can mean like it can be gospel to some people, but it could be like the absolute like if they hear that, it could send shivers down the spine to other players. I think when it comes to to the professional game as well now, like the game has moved on so much. So 10, 15 years ago, everybody played four four two. So when it came to tactics, I don't think it it was. I might be wrong here to be fair because I was a lot younger, but I don't think it was necessarily as relevant as it is today because. I remember, I can't remember who, who was it at the weekend. Oh, Mourinho, sorry. Mourinho's said for, for years now, I prepare my teams to play against any system. So we can't go into games thinking we are definitely going to play against a 4 3 3 today. We might play against a 3 4 3 or 3 5 2. And I think the, rev- the revolution of tactics and systems, I think you have to just prepare your players in, in the way that is best for, for your players almost. Um, again, going off on a bit of a tangent here, but it's a, it's a good point to be fair. Um, but I just think when he, when he says take part in the game, well, surely you're going to want you take part in the game. It's your job. It's it's your profession. It's you've got to take pride in what you do. So I I just I wanted to get people's thoughts on that because I, I was very worried when he said that. But it's clear to me at the minute that Newcastle don't seem to have any sort of understanding of tactics. So um, and I just go back to there, what Hubert Busby Jr. said, it doesn't need to be a good cop or a bad cop, just the right cop at the right time. I thought that was a really good, um, really good quote. So um, just to finish off, obviously, any questions? Anybody anybody got any burning thoughts about what, what we spoke about today? Um, happy to be challenged on anything. Happy to continue the conversation. I think there's been there's been a couple of good points about um like trying to use football language in a certain way. Um so I'm just sort of speaking like from my own experience, yeah. Like so I went I've I've went from coaching almost like foundation phase all the time. Um and then I went to start I sort of missed out coaching in the youth development phase and just sort of started coaching adults and senior players just Main, like partly for the social side and partly like just to challenge myself. Um, and when I first started coaching adults, I probably went in at one side, like trying to be like the fountain of knowledge and trying to use like football specific terms that you pick up on your coaching courses and you learn about um, to try and like almost like show off to the players and impress the players. And then what I've found as I've, as I've worked with the players for a few years now is actually keeping it simple is the most important thing. So like I could be putting a session on or on a game day, like giving some information that could be using like proper football jargon. But then actually the players are looking going like, just, just say it this way, like to keep it simple because then like, especially on a game day when it's, it's intense and it's, it's in the moment, like players need to be able to understand the language and resonate really quickly. And that's, that's coaching, isn't it? Like, I don't, I don't know. That's sort of like my experience. So, like, I don't know if anybody has any wants to like say, like, mm-hmm. oh, Jack, you're wrong. You need to be educating the players or what? Or I don't know. I mean, I've said I've said this to before. The lads I've worked with, one of the, the big lesson I took was from me, one of my daughter's horse riding instructors, where he was talking about you've got to learn their language if you're the coach. You know, so if if, if I'm taking a group, I've got to learn what they understand as well, what they. The, the type of terminology, the type of language and the, the way things need to be said. I've got to learn that just as much as they've got there to hopefully be picking up the things they need to pick up to help them as they the, the go through the football pathway. Uh, so I think it is massive that you you learn what you, your players need, what your players want. 
as much as what we want to give to give them. Yeah, I remember uh, the lads I worked with, we played Barnsley first game of the season and pretty much 95% of the game, their coach would see a half space. And I didn't really see any evidence of the players understanding what half space actually meant. I mean, I know, I know Wayne loves this half space and false nine and stuff like that. So um, I'd love to get his thoughts on that. But I, I just think when he says half space, I think, right, well, do the players actually understand what you mean? Um, and it was clear to me that they probably didn't. So I don't think half space is necessarily, a, I, I know people might disagree with this, but I don't think half space is necessarily a, a great term. I, th I just think, you know, is it is it over complicating the game? And just what just going back to what Jack said about some professionals have said that coaches are amazing and the, the best things in sliced bread. But if you listen to what they say, there's nothing amazing about what they say. They just keep the game as simple as possible and they have those those constants um, there for when they need them as well. I've done it where like I've been guilty of it in the past. It's a bit similar to what Jack sort of said is. Like listening to other coaches and then you hear something and you think, oh yeah, I'll go out and use that. And then you use it. And then all your players are like, like what, where have you got this from? Like, and they'll start to like switch off because you're using them sort of words. And it's like, you've clearly been, so like, especially when we're 16s now, if I do it, we've got one coach who loves to like to see a phrase. So every game he has a different phrase and they all just like make a running joke about it. Whereas I've sort of like came down, back down to earth and just thought, well, these all these phrases are good, um, but at the same time, do the players, as Jack said, do the players understand them? Do they need it? Like at that age, do the, do the under 16s, do they need us to talk to them about? Yes, I say overlaps, but do they, do they really need to know about underlaps because they're doing it? And um, do I really need to get into the fine detail of combination play because they're doing it? Or can I put it like as simple as I can and then just let them get out and play? Because as I say, I've been guilty in the past where, especially when uh, Wayne speaks, just writing down key words and trying to hoi them into me coaching, but it doesn't always work. Yeah. I think, I think like, the, thing with the, the, thing, the thing with the terms and, and stuff like that, I think there's no there's no problem or issue with that, but you've got to have worked on it with the kids or with your players. So if you're going, if you're going to introduce something new, so I, yes, I'm not a, <laughs> a great fan of all the complicated modern terminology that's used because I do think at times it overcomplicates things. Um, but ultimately, if, if you work on it and the players understand what you're talking about, so that's where what you said there about the, the kid that, you know, down at Barnsley about the players not understanding what the coach is here. But that's surely that's what coaching is. That's the whole point of it. Um, whatever, whatever you want to help them to understand, however you do it, as long as the, the players find the right answers, then that's a success. Um, but it's just making sure that if you're going to do something, you, you actually work on it and therefore the, you, you find out whether the players understand it or not. Because I think we've all been guilty of that. I mean, I was I was looking at a long time ago, there was a, a coach just using an example of closed down, closing down. And he's like, to, to all the players and all the different age groups, that'll probably mean something completely different unless it's been shown and explained and worked on and practised. And even then, coaches will still do that differently. Um, so I think it's one of those things where you, the, the terminology and the words got to got to fit with the players, but as long as it helps them understand, then it shouldn't really matter what what it is. Yeah, I nicked one off Stevie Mack, and that was the the do like don't get burnt one, and I say that to me players all the time, and like the difference in that is like ridiculous. So I'll just shout under the pitch, don't get burnt, don't get burnt, and like people will look at us and be like what you're talking about, but we players know what it means because before I was shouting deal with it and in their heads that meant just get rid of it, just get rid of it, deal with it, get rid of it, get rid of it. And then I was like, when I spoke to them, they're like, well, you're telling us to deal with it and I did. So now I'm like, well, just don't get burnt, don't get burnt. And now like the more willing to do like try stuff, but like, as I say, try not to get burnt. And that's like sort of the running theme. And uh, yeah, I've nicked that one off Stevie. Like, yeah, I've called Stevie Max, Steve McGuinness now because he absolutely loves Paul McGuinness stuff. So anything Paul McGuinness like, he, he puts it on, like, doesn't he? Um, so yeah, I think like the biggest biggest takeaways for me for this um, is have a constant or have constants. Um, and what are those constants to to 
put in your back pocket and use whenever you need them for the players. Um, and then again, it's it's a bit of a cliche, but it's it's massively important to to know your players, know the the level of understanding they're at, know the level of the game they're at. Because if you don't do that, you haven't got a chance. You haven't got a chance. And like you said, Louis, like your coach, you work with clubs phrases, but it could be absolutely useless. It could be absolutely pointless to use with the players you've got because they might have a level of understanding that is so basic that that's all they need and that's all they're ever going to need. And it's just about drip feeding different ways to to actually coach those players within those topics that, again, that, that's all that's needed. It doesn't need to be, it's not, it's not rocket science football if you, if you understand your players. So, um, I don't know if anybody's got any anything else to add. Um, I don't know where Jack's gone. I think he's had enough of us, to be fair. Um, I don't know if anybody's got anything to add, but um, if not, then I'm happy to stay on the call a little bit longer if anybody wants to to chat. If not, I'll pass it back to Jack. No, good stuff. Um, thanks for coming on, everyone. Obviously, Scotty, as always, thanks for, for volunteering to deliver stuff and, and lead a conversation. I think that the whole idea of the coffee club is just to get some some different viewpoints and, and hopefully leave with more questions than what you have answers. Um, so I know I've just made like a, a, a page full of notes there off, off everyone's comments and I've, it's just full of questions that I need to probably look at myself when I'm coaching and, and what I can uh, what I can improve on and get better at. So Scott, massive thanks for, for doing that for us.